And God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water, and she went and filled the bottle with water and gave the lad to drink. And God was with the lad, and he grew and dwelt in the wilderness and became an archer. And that's an amazing story. And you sit and think about, I, like I said, I haven't been that desperate, but I've been desperate. I've been in circumstances, situations, just felt all alone. And really did. Oh, I could say, you know, confess. <laughs> but in my heart and my mind, I was, I was full of doubt and wonder. Where are you, Lord? Where are you? Why is this happening? I mean, there was a time when I was out getting drunk and being an idiot. <laughs> and I don't remember ever being that desperate. <laughs> but here I was trying to live for the Lord and found myself that desperate. But I can tell you, especially now with hindsight looking back, I can see the things that God did, the way He provided, the times He sent someone. And sometimes when it just would be a peace come over me. Peace that passes understanding. I couldn't explain it. But it was there. And it wasn't because I was some great prayer warrior, by the way. My prayers were choking up and saying, Lord, I don't know what to do, but you're going to have to do something. I'm powerless. I don't know what to do. But God was there. Look at Psalm 139. I want you to not only read this with me for a few minutes, but this is one you ought to bookmark. And let's just start in Psalm 139. Read the first four verses with me. O Lord, Thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my down-sitting and mine uprising. Thou understandest my thought afar off. Thou compassest my path and my lying down, and art acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Lord, Thou knowest it altogether. Now, how many times do you think about that during a day? There isn't even a word that rolls off your tongue that God is not aware of. Even when you're not aware of His presence, He's there. That'll make you sometimes think, oh, I wish He wouldn't. <laughs> hey, I'm just being honest. <laughs> Amen. Jesus said, every idle word be judged. <laughs> Let's pick up in verses 5 and 6. Read with me. Thou hast beset me behind and before and laid Thine hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain unto it. In other words, sit with this in front of your face and really meditate on it. And if you really get it, you understand it's beyond your comprehension. This, the fact that God is there with you at all times. He's always there. You can never get out of His presence. But that's an assurance that when you're going through those tough times, who knows? Who knows? Mm -hmm. Within a matter of weeks, months, or years of the Lord's, Lord tarries. I didn't uh, really reach a desperation point, but when my doctor told me that I had COPD and, uh, you know, for a lot of people that doesn't end real well. And you sit and think about that, but you know what? God is there. God's going to be with me. Whether it gets bad or it gets good, no matter what direction it goes, God's there. And it's an assurance. And it is. It's beyond being able to understand. I've, I always tell a story that uh, Sharon and Steve, I know, haven't heard it yet. I don't think you have either. But... <laughs> well, Mariah was little and she was feeling sorry for God because she said, um, Dad, if... God is the Father and He doesn't have a Father? I said, no, God doesn't have a Father. Um, he doesn't need one. He's God. And she was really feeling sorry for Him. Because uh, she thought everybody ought to have a Father, have a Dad. I said, well, God has the Son and the Holy Spirit and then He created all the angels and He has all of us. God, He has plenty of fellowship. And uh, then she said, but where did he come from? You're like, oh boy. 
you're only three years old, kid. You shouldn't be asking these questions yet. <laughs> and I said, <laughs> no, I can't remember. I think she's five or six, though. She did a little thing. She, I said, well, honey. <laughs> and I started kind of trying to explain. I don't even understand it, so you know, it's kind of hard to uh, explain. But I started explaining. And I was going on a little bit. And she says, okay, Dad, I'm getting a headache. <laughs> <laughs> but that's her way of saying what we just read. <laughs> these these thoughts are too wonderful for me. They're beyond finding out. <laughs> and a little tot was just more honest than a lot of us. We try to act like we understand things. We don't. This is powerful, though, what we're getting ready to read. Beginning verse 7, read through verse 10 with me. Whither shall I go from thy spirit? Or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. Now you may wonder why he says, if I make my bed in hell. And at this point, it's before the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so all the saints went to a place called paradise, but it was in what is largely called Hades, or, or uh, hell is the uh, phrase we use for it. In the Old Testament was uh, Sheol in the, in the Hebrew. And this is a place where they were in waiting. So when David is, is inspired of God to write this, he's talking about under that circumstance, uh, even if he were to die and go into this place of waiting, where then Jesus went in and led captivity captive and brought them out and took them back to heaven with Him. But before the resurrection, they were in this place called Abraham's bosom. And uh, you remember the rich man Lazarus and that whole story. Paradise. And so here He's saying, even if I go there, you're there. If I go to the highest heavens, you're there. No matter where I go, the Spirit of God is there. Now, that's different from pantheism. Charlie's been dealing with that with someone that... Uh, He's been witnessing too. Pantheism is this idea that God is in all. All is God. God is all. It's a weird kind of hippie stuff <laughs> that you hear. About. And uh, that, that God is not the same as His creation. He's separate from His creation, and yet He is in all places. Mm -hmm. It's called omnipresence is the big word. Omnipresence. He's all places at all times. No matter where you go, no matter where you find yourself, you are not separated from God. The only separation between you and God can be sin. Mm -hmm. If you have not been born again, then God waits for you to repent and be born again so that He can then be your Father. And if you are a Christian, you can allow sin to come between you and God as far as your relationship is concerned. And you can then just, not even as much as any kind of purposeful sin, you can just let things go. Stop praying. Stop reading the Word. Stop witnessing. Stop doing those things that draw you closer to the Lord. All of us have to be on guard for that. But the presence of God is always there. And at the moment that you come, like the prodigal son, it says he came to himself. Immediately, he had the realization that he was in the presence of the Lord. Immediately, when you find yourself in those circumstances, you can immediately... Once you become aware of your need, 1 John chapter 1, verse 8, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. At that moment, you come to yourself and you confess. And God's already there, but we're blinded by our own sin. We're blinded by our own backslidings. And we have to remove that blinder that we've put up in front of our own eyes. And we confess our sins immediately. The blinders lifted, and the presence of God is there. Let's keep reading uh, 11 and 12. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to thee. Now this is... An awesome thing to really think through. But God sees as well in the darkness as He does during the light. God has perfect night vision. 